Game Tech here again to break down the tech that drives the games we love, and we have another quick graphic settings explainer for you. We're talking about one of my favorites, anisotropic filtering, and more broadly, what texture filtering does for your games. But before we dive in, be sure to subscribe to GameSpot for more game tech. All right, let's filter the extraneous details and get into it. Anisotropic filtering is commonly abbreviated as AF because this setting looks dope as f In all honesty, it's one of the settings I'd recommend you prioritize cranking up, but this one's a little more tricky to dissect, so here's an example. Look at this side-by-side -side comparison of the prog hub area in Deus Ex Mankind Divided. On the left, you see the game without any degree of anisotropic filtering enabled. Notice how farther down the cobbled street, the textures get blurrier and blurrier. Now on the right, we have anisotropic filtering cranked up to 16 times. The distant cobbled stones look much clearer. Now let's switch over to a comparison between 8 times and 16 times anisotropic filtering in the same game. They're quite similar, but the difference is more pronounced the farther the distance of the textures, or sharper your viewing angle. In many cases, the performance difference between 8 times and 16 times is negligible, so you won't really lose anything by getting a little more detail in those far off textures. The effect of texture filtering is more apparent when your character is physically moving forward in the game world. Without an isotropic filtering, you can see distant lines or zones move where surface details are basically cut off. The transition in quality of surface textures as you're in motion can be jarring. Generally, an isotropic filtering can noticeably affect frame rate and it takes up memory bandwidth from your video card, though the impact will vary from one computer to another. So what's happening here? When the in-game camera views textures from an oblique angle, they tend to become distorted without an isotropic filtering. And the farther the distance or sharper the viewing angle, the fuzzier the texture will look. This helps lighten the workload on the GPU since less detail needs to be drawn on a game's surfaces. And it's sort of a compromise for details that aren't necessarily at the player's focus. Older PC games sometimes only offer either bilinear or trilinear filtering, which essentially aims to accomplish the same goal, just to a lesser degree. Here's an example from the classic first-person shooter Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Bilinear filtering doesn't look great, and the distance before surfaces start to look distorted is quite short. Trilinear filtering extends this distance, but surface blurriness is still apparent. So a quick tip for games that don't have an isotropic filtering options in the menus. Just pull up your video card's control panel and enable an isotropic filtering manually. Ah, much better. Here's a summary to the backdrop of Half-Life 2. An isotropic filtering gives distant surface textures that are seen at an angle more clarity. The best way to see the effect is to look at the ground a few meters ahead, then compare it to the clarity of the ground close to you with AF off. As you look farther away, the surfaces become blurrier. The effect is also more pronounced when the in-game camera is in motion. With AF on, the far-off surfaces become much clearer and look great in motion. We kept this one short and sweet, but like anything in computer graphics, texture filtering is complex. So get in the comments to continue this discussion. Give this video a thumbs up and watch our other videos on anti-aliasing, refresh rate, V-Sync, and all that good stuff. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.